trap. Trap like a rat. Well, there's multiple meanings of the trap, as in like rat trap. Meet me in the trap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's that's another thing too. It's like in rap music, the trap. You know, it's I don't like, know what that is. It's basically like talking about like the trap, like trap houses and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, like like where fiend, you know, crack fiends are and all that shit. Oh. It's first first thing that comes to mind is Admiral Akbar. <laughs> it's a trap. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. It. I mean, that's uh, honestly, he got done dirty whenever they gave away his sacrifice. <sighs> in in. I don't want. Last... I don't want to talk about the Last Jedi. No, no. We we done with the Last Jedi. We're done with Star Wars. We're the Star Wars movies. I, I'm done at least. There are there are only six. That's it. Maybe seven if you want to make an argument for Rogue One, but yeah, there's only there's only six I 100% officially recognize. I liked Rogue One. No, I did too. I liked Rogue One. And did you not like Han Solo? No. Oh. Everything was brown. It had no personality, and you could tell where they hired. Like the thing is, they hired another director to take over, like in the middle of production. And you can tell which directors directed which sections. And I'm just like, this feels so out of place in so many places. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I, I'm like... <sighs> Once again, Disney just can't help themselves. They just gotta micromanage every little thing and pretend like everything is just... Like, oh, we know what's best. We know what's best. It's like, they fucked up the Star Wars franchise, and now, eventually, took them long enough, they fucked up the Marvel franchise. And now, what do we got? What does Disney got? Like, how much money did they lose last year? Oh, I don't know. It was like, it, I think they lost over several hundred billion because of their stocks tumbling. I I just don't pay attention to this stuff anymore. I don't either. Yeah. I mean, I watched the movies, like, not the newer movies, but the older movies a lot, but... Well... Going from the most dominant like force at the box office to now being a laughing stock, it's quite humbling. I mean, I can tell you, I don't have Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I I still do, but mostly because of Kate. I I don't watch Disney Plus that much. I don't watch anything anymore. Re- oh, really? Yeah. Well. I guess that's a benefit. The only thing I've been watching recently is I'm trying to get caught up on Shogun. Oh, yeah. The, that show a lot of people says really good. That's the only thing I've watched in a long time. That's on Hulu, right? Uh, I believe so. We've just been yeah. DVRing it on FX. but Oh. Yeah. Micah still DVRs things. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Micah's an old to... school kind of guy. Yeah. Do you have direct TV? Uh, charter or whatever. Charter. That oh yeah, oh, is yeah. It, or is it Spectrum now? I don't know. Spectrum. I don't even know. I don't even know what it's called. Oh. I don't remember what it. All you do is you pay the bill and that's it. They contact us and they're like, "Yeah, we don't support your DVR anymore. We're going to send you a new one because we didn't realize people still had these." I'm like, <laughs> "Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, thanks." Uh, gosh, DVRs. I remember like the. The digital cable box that I had forever had one of those shitty little uh, spin point hard drives in it that fail so it, quickly it was, when they're it overused. Was, it was a hard loss because on that DVR, Caleb had saved uh, Kevin Pereira's very last Attack of the Show episode what? for years on that DVR. Are you serious? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. No! Yeah. Damn yeah. it! It was the good old days. You couldn't keep it? I. When was it? It was like 2014, wasn't it? Uh, that seemed... Maybe. Oh, no, per- Pereira left in 2012. Yeah, yeah, it was... He left right after Sessler. Yeah, because he left, and then it went on for a couple more years. But... Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I don't think there's any way to download stuff off of uh, DVR since it's like... I mean... Actually, you can. Well, you, somebody you... smarter than me. Well, no, like... you'll actually... All you have to do is crack open the back of it and just take out the hard drive. Yeah, yep. I, we didn't know how to do that. Man, I rub sticks together to make fire. I don't 
No, I don't understand all this <laughs> witchcraft. Me, He's a cave man. Me, Micah, me not understand all your technology. witchcraft. The, <laughs> this, this witchcraft. You have all your, your copper that you send your lightning through to make pictures on the glass. I don't I, know. I can just see, I can just see him now. He's like the, that one dude, for, like Ron Perlman from Quest for Fire. Like, oh, oh, oh. It, literally, every Robert E. Howard story where Conan <laughs> comes up against a sorcerer and he's always like, Steel, I trust steel. This, you know, all these sorcerers and their ways. You just, you know, it's no. These sorcerers and yeah. their black magic. Yeah, exactly. Like any anyone who practices the dark arts would taste my steel. Pretty much. <laughs> anyway, this is trap. Let me get it on screen. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Lady Raven. No, dad jokes. This is serious. Come on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Josh Hartnett. We were talking about Pearl Harbor the other day. This is slap dad. Thank you. Thank you. This is literally the best day of my life. These trucks outside, the camera's everywhere, Jamie. I'm not supposed to tell. Something happening? Don't rat me out. I won't. You know the butcher? The freaking nut job that goes around just chopping people up? Well, the feds or whatever heard that he's gonna be here today, so they set up a trap for him. This whole concert, it's a trap. They're watching all the exits, checking everyone that leaves. There's no way to get out of here. Oh boy. I'm sorry, Riley, what was that? Your daughter's never gonna forget this day. Oh boy. Kind of dope, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. Okay, that premise seems pretty cool. Yeah. Don't know why the guy selling t-shirts is what aware of yeah, that's, that operation. That's a bit weird for me too. If anything, I would have asked like head of security or something like that. So that takes me out of it a little bit. But the yeah. premise seems cool. Oh yeah, definitely. It's like I you're focusing want... on the bad guy as the protagonist. It's like right. Ooh. Which that to me feels like earlier in his career he would have saved that as the twist. Yes. To try and get you. So I wonder if maybe he's just given up trying to be the twist guy and is just laying it all out there because that seems legitimately interesting. Yes. Well, Split was the thing. Uh, the thing with Split, the twist came from not him but from something else, and I think that was, and it was a twist that didn't feel like like. It was, it was like, oh my gosh. Instead, you were like, oh no. It was something that made you just feel like like a depth of sorrow for another character. And you were like, damn. That's just, it, it's, and yeah. What I do like about this trailer, in a weird way, like I'm not rooting for him because he's obviously a bad oh, guy. Oh yeah, he's an evil but I'm motherfucker. But like, I'm like... How's he gonna get out of this? Yeah, like you want to know. Yeah. yeah, you're curious as to see what his plan is yeah. for like for like getting out and getting around shit. 
Like that's and honestly, you know, obviously he's basically the dad of a Swifty that is suffering through a concert. <laughs> he deserves to blow off. A, he deserves to blow off a little steam. Okay. I was thinking that too. <laughs> I'm just saying. I didn't want to say it because we got a semi Swifty right here. I'm not a semi Swift. I know her songs. I'm, okay. I'm not like I don't know. I didn't know all that about the private jet shit that <laughs> we were talking about the other day. It was like, I mean, I, Taylor Swift has a meeting downtown. Oh, I'll take the private jet. Like I don't care about carbon foot. Uh, I mean, it's not that I don't care. It's just like if I don't. Ugh. track everything that other people do you know so anyway what what relates to me so much with this is like being in at like having experienced concerts before and like all those people in one area yeah and trying to know like where your exits are and mm -hmm. the buddy system thing and all that kind oh. of stuff i mean I always have, like, me, I always, like, build up contingency plans for, like, just in case something does happen. For instance... Because you never know. For instance, if you'll notice, by that door right there, there's a baseball bat. Mm -hmm. And if someone just so happens to try and break into this house in the basement down here, I will grab that bat and I will tell you all to run upstairs and get the fuck out of here. And I will face down, I'll, I'll draw down on him with that fucking baseball bat. Because I ain't afraid to take, I ain't afraid to like, take licks if it means like, y'all can get away. Also, we got some wizard sticks right there too. Yeah, we got the, yeah. You, which... can, uh, <laughs> you can put, uh, you can put like a, like a tube sock or some pantyhose over a baseball bat. Just in case they grab it, it'll like, whoop. Slip right off and just yeah. smack them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually a good plan because if. Yeah. And, and also, I've got other things around here that I can use. Like, for instance, up in my room, like, we talked about if someone tried to break, like, we had an emergency situation. I'm not going to give away, like, what, like the whole thing, but our neighbor had an instance where um, they barricade, like, someone barricaded themselves in their room, and it was a mental health crisis, basically, hmm. according to the report. There hasn't been anything else reported about it. We don't know what it. actually happened. Yeah, but needless to say, it was pretty bad and like there were cop cars out front there was like two cop cars and like a few other things and and, and undercover cops and yes police tape and and basically i i that saw that a and days i ago. yeah i saw that and i grabbed my shotgun out of my room and basically just made sure it was loaded and i was just like just in case, you know, if this dude breaks out of the that situation. Which he wasn't getting past those cops. No, he know, wasn't. But, but here's the thing. He or she. He you will know, after he watches like... this movie. Yeah, he'll just Apparently, be. Like, yeah. He'll just he'll just be like, "You sons of bitches! I know where you live." It's like I. <laughs> I do kind of wonder though, like, how do they know he's at the concert, but they don't know who he is? Well, that's a little weird. I don't know. That's maybe that's one part of it that they're going to they're going to reveal. Uh, as the film goes on, like they're gonna discuss, like maybe they built a criminal profile around him, and apparently, he's taken people at these concerts or oh, something. Maybe, mm. maybe that's the maybe that's one of the twists. Like he's well aware of who this character or who the singer is and her music and all that because he knows that it's easy targets there because everybody's watching her, mm. and if someone in the crowd who comes to that show by themselves without somebody just disappears. Just like how Kate's gonna assassinate people while they're watching Nostalgia Critic because they're just hooked on Doug. <laughs> yes, they don't notice anything else. Exactly. Uh, that that happened <laughs> earlier, and and it was it it blew me away how long she was there. It was like thirty minutes. She just sat back there, like over like I was like, bobbing right up there. I was doing this. Like, I was man, he, up and then going back down. And man, then, he looks good in that tie. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I dressed up. I thought that would be the thing in the video that would catch. You know, me wearing the Nostalgia Critic outfit. No, it's going to be Kate yeah. pantomiming back there just being like... Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I really thought Micah found me. 
whenever he said something about something being distracting. Oh, that's what's distracting. Yeah. It was Doug. Doug it was when Doug was, was like rubbing his face oh, yeah. and all that. Yeah. Well, no, there was a red light, and you're like, I can't focus on anything but the red light. And, uh, yeah. Like, that's what's distracting here. Yeah. 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 And no, it, for me, it was just his weird like him rubbing face his rubbing face thing. and just like yeah. just doing all that weird shit. And then at the end, I realized that he was emulating Marlon Brando from Apocalypse Now, which, oh. yeah. Which, I, I got Marlon Brando, I just, I did dissociate with The Godfather and not Apocalypse Now. Yeah. and that's probably why it was disturbing me, because I didn't make the full connection, because I'm like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, it happens. But anyway, that was uh, Trap, the official trailer. Uh, what do y'all think? Do y'all think it's going to be interesting? I mean... It has an interesting concept. Mm -hmm. I like Josh Hartnett as an actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, say what you will, like, if M. Night Shyamalan does a decent job with this, it could be something. Mm -hmm. And I think because people have recognized his shtick and he's realized, yeah, I can't do the twist. Oh, what a twist anymore without people, you know, just expecting it. But I guess we'll see. But anyway, um, I guess until next time, everybody, signing off. I'm Nate. I'm Kate. Micah. Y'all be good people. Take care. Peace.